Walker. Has worked in the advertising industry for over 18 years. He is a published author, a frequent speaker, a world-recognized authority on a subject that doesn't matter at all. Please welcome Douglas Walker. All right, so we've talked about a bunch of things related to rock, everything from monuments and mountains and you name it. This is what I think of when I think of rock. I think of a closed fist powering down on a poorly chosen pair of scissors. <laughs> to me, this is what it is truly all about. And for about 10 years, it actually took about a third of my attention. Here's another rock. This is actually called Archie's Rock, and it's in front of my parents' cottage. One drunken evening with my brother in the late fall, we played a best of 13 match to pick who has to get wood for the fire. Um, it was a disaster. I totally destroyed him. Uh, but what the interesting thing is it was really intense. <laughs> And what happened that night created something called the World Rock, Paper, Scissors Society. And obviously we haven't been literally serving people since 1918. We developed a bit of a backstory on that. Um, so, when the hangover wore off, I was still kind of left with this notion that, you know what, there seemed to be more to this game than I actually thought about. Um, so it was an excuse to start a website. And excuse me, but this is what websites looked like in 1995. <laughs> This website was equal parts game theory, uh, armchair psychology, and applied bullshit. Um, but what happened was it created a bit of a culture. People started talking about it. And so this, what you see here, is uh, what we call gambits. And that is a series of three moves made with strategic intention or a shorthand way. So you've got power moves like uh, the avalanche or potentially more theoretical intellectual moves like the scissors sandwich. Now, as many of you probably realize, a game that is played largely with hands doesn't leave much of a trace in the anthropological record. So, we were allowed to create the culture and history of rock, paper, scissors without any constraint of facts. Um, we got a lot of our inspiration from uh, communist, uh, communist uh, and cultural revolution imagery because it was really powerful. People always had their fists out. It was the labor movement and everything like that. Um, and it was, it, it was something that meant a lot to us and just seemed to work really, really well uh, for, uh, for the movement. And so gradually, we had this website, people were coming to it. We started selling memberships in the World Rock Paper Scissors Society. We started selling shirts. Um, and we started making some money off it. And uh, strangely enough, there was a lot of people who got most of it. So we did probably what anybody would do. And we took all of that money and said, okay, this is gonna be a prize purse and we're gonna hold a party for our friends and we're gonna call it the goddamn World Championships of Rock, Paper, Scissors. So we did it. This is uh, uh, one, of, uh, one of the events that we actually, uh, that we actually put on. And you can see the intensity that is actually involved in, uh, in a game like this. This is the uh, 2004 champion, Lee Ramage, fine player, excellent player. Um, and what, uh, we realized that we were really kind of onto something because it was actually the first time we held this event. It was a lineup three blocks long in a, snow, a snowstorm to actually get into the event. People were scalping tickets. A couple of years later, we had CBS, ABC, BBC all elbowing each other to try and get pictures of this guy, Master Rochambola, who is, if you don't follow rock, paper, scissors, he really is the Michael Jordan of the sport. Um, but the cool thing about it was, he was the Michael Jordan, he was the best person uh, in the sport, because we told the media he was. Uh, and therefore, he was. Around this time, we actually got contacted by uh, a book agent, who managed magically to get six publishers interested in publishing the uh, official Rock, Paper, Scissors strategy guide. Um, this is something that Simon Schuster no doubt regrets to this very day. Uh, but uh, we also had a uh, group of uh, Calgary people following us around, uh, creating a documentary on the subject. And actually in 2007, this film, Rock, Paper, Scissors, A Geek Tragedy, won the, um, uh, won the Audience Choice uh, Award at SIF. 
as we started, thank you, thank you very much. Um, the, uh, uh, as we started expanding a little bit, other countries started sending their champions to the world uh, championships. And believe me, you've never experienced anything until you've had to deal with the ego of a rock, paper, scissors national champion. It was unbelievable. One of the hardest decisions I ever had to make in my life, this is true, I'm not lying to you, was whether Fox or ESPN should get the television rights uh, to uh, the Rock, Rock, Paper, Scissors Championships. Um, in the end, Fox got it, and I learned a really valuable lesson. Rock, Paper, Scissors is not as good a televised sport as you might think it is. So we didn't do that again. Um, in 2008, uh, in 2008, we actually won a rock paper. Uh, sorry, we won a Guinness World Record for the largest rock paper scissors competition. When I found this out, like the 12 year old inside me, like peed his pants with excitement, but the adult in me made me realize that the Guinness has really jumped the shark. Um, one of, the, one of the more interesting things that happened was it was a Japanese gentleman who sold an art collection uh, that was worth uh, approximately $20 million, Picasso, Cezanne, a bunch of others, and he couldn't decide which of these venerable auction houses should sell it. How, who got it? Rock, paper, scissors. It was the largest, most expensive rock, paper, scissors match in history of $12 million. Okay, so we've talked all about this stuff. I'm gonna back up for one half second and just say it's not a game of chance. You might think it is, but it actually isn't. It's two people making an active decision on that, and they are subject to it, and I've got the data to prove it. Over thousands and thousands of matches that happen at our events, you would expect this would, that if it were truly random, it would be a third, a third, a third for each of these various throws. But obviously, rock is the choice of most rock, paper, scissors players at about 37%, and people tend to shy away from scissors. All right. So I'm going to leave you with one final thought, and that is, uh, I'm sure all of you here are familiar with a gentleman by the name of Seer Bannis, who's one of the top seven rock, paper, scissors strategists in the world. Um, and his line is something that I will never forget, when he said, paper is the answer, should rock be the question? Thank you very much.